Take your Bibles and turn with me, please, to Malachi chapter 3. In just a moment, we'll look at verse 7. We've been talking about, as for me and my house. How many of you know that you don't need to follow the crowd? Amen? Everybody know that? Don't get out there and get all wrapped up in all the stuff that everybody else is wrapped up in. You be wrapped up in the kingdom of God. You be wrapped up in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. You be wrapped up in the things of God. And as for us and our house, we're going to do things a little differently, regardless of what everybody else does. I'm not being arrogant when I say that, but I'm just going to stay focused. How many of you think that we need to stay focused as followers of Jesus Christ? Amen. We can't do everything all the time, but we can do the things that God wants us to do. So what are those, preacher? Number one, I'm going to live in the Word of God. I'm going to take in Scripture. I'm I'm not going to cut off the source of the Word of God. I need the Word of God burning in my heart every day. So I'm going to read my Bible just like I read it this morning at 5 o'clock. I'm going to get up and go to bed on time so I can get up on time. And I'm going to read the Word of God, and I'm going to take in Scripture. I'm going to memorize Scripture. I'm going to hear the Word of God taught. I'm going to hear the Word of God preached. I'm going to live and meditate in the, on the Word of the living God. I am going to take in Scripture Whatever else anybody does, that's what I'm going to do. Number two, I'm going to pray. I'm going to talk with my God. I'm going to sing praises to him. I'm going to pray scripture. I'm going to pray the promises of God back to the God of the promise. I'm going to live in prayer. I'm going to be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. I'm going to let my requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God that passes all understanding is going to guard my heart and my mind in Christ Jesus. I am not going down. I am going up. I'm not going to be under. I'm going to be on top. I'm going to be praying scripture back to God, praying the promises of God, praying all that God wants me to pray for. I'm going to pray over my family. I'm going to be quiet sometimes and just listen to the Lord and say, speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. God's a talker. He'll talk to you if you'll pray. So I'm going to read the Bible. I'm going to pray. I'm going to also be around Christians. I'm going to fellowship with other folks because I need to stay close to the fire, man. I need to be with those other coals that are burning. I don't want to roll off and get cold toward my God. No, I want to I don't want to forsake the assembling of myself together. I want to be close to my Christian friends because when I'm around them, I'm a better person than when I'm not around them. So I'm going to fellowship with other Christians. Then I'm going to tell lost people about Jesus. I'm going to try my best to just weave that into every conversation. If I don't know somebody's spiritual status, I'm going to talk to them about their soul. And I'm going to talk to them about their need for the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to share the gospel because I love Jesus. And when you love somebody, you talk not only with them in prayer, but you talk about them in a good way in witnessing. I'm going to brag on Jesus, not just from a pulpit. I want to say this to you. If I don't do it out there, I have no right to do it right here. Amen? Amen. And then I'm going to Give. I'm going to be a giver, and one of the things I'm going to do, I'm going to tithe to my local church so that our church collectively can do more than we could ever do on our own, and we're going to reach the nation and the nations with the gospel as we tithe. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm on that, fourth, that fifth part today, and we're talking today about I will, take my, I will give my tithe to the local church. Let me just talk to you about tithing. We'll look at one verse. Can we put verse 10 back on the screen just for a moment? Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse so that there may be food in my house. Test me now on this. Only time in the Bible God says that. In fact, Jesus warned, it is written, you shall not test the Lord your God. But you know what? If God says, test me, I guess it's okay, all right? God said, test me now on this. Put me to the test. Only time in the Bible he says that. Put me to the test. Now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven, pour out for you a blessing until it overflows. All right. First of all, let's look at the proportion of tithing. Verse 10, bring the whole tithe. Everybody say whole tithe. Sounds a lot like roll tithe, but it's not. Israelites gave at least 10% to the Lord's work. 
They gave 10% to the Levites for their personal support. The Levites were not to be farmers. They were to tend to the house of God. They were not to own any land. They were to be provided land within the city of God. And they were to use this 10% to support the Levites for their personal lives and also for the support of the temple. They gave another 10% in the way of their produce. Whatever they harvested, they gave 10% of that to be eaten at either the tabernacle or later when Solomon built the temple. And then in addition to that, every third year, they'd give another 10% every third year to give aid, we would say benevolence, to the poor, the orphans, the widows, and the aliens, the people of other countries that lived with them. So when you add it all up, they gave about 20, 25%. But the Lord says the place to start is with the tithe. Besides all the free will offerings, just the tithe. Start with 10%, the whole tithe. In my earlier years of pastoring, I've been pastoring since 1983. So that's 38 years. Is that right? Yes, that's right. And so... When I first started, I was the only full-time staff member at our church in Texas. So I had a perpetual staff meeting. I was always with myself. And I did all the counseling and all of the marital counseling when I did a wedding. And I can remember one of the things we would talk about, because even back then, before I even knew the name Dave Ramsey, before Dave Ramsey was even anything, probably before he was saved, May have been before he was born, I don't know. But uh, I, I can remember reading that the number one cause of divorce among Christians is fighting about money, fussing about money, even back then. And so I would talk to them. I said, let's do a budget here. I said, I don't want the numbers. Y'all can write down the numbers. But I just want to walk with you through a budget. And it was always the case. I knew the ones whose parents had taught them to tithe because it's the first thing out of their mouth. But the vast majority of the people I counseled with, young couples, you know, they come in there, they're just so in love. Oh, I'm going to tell you something. It's just, oh, it's something. You can cut it with a knife. Oh, well, how are you going to live? Oh, we don't know. (laughs) It's going to be wonderful. We're just going to live on love. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Amen? Amen. Amen. You can't make that stuff up. And so I said, well, while you're living on love, let's talk about money, all right? Let's talk about finances. Let's talk about a budget. Well, what's that? That's aiming your money because it's going to go somewhere. You might as well aim it, all right? It's going to flow somewhere. It's currency. It's going to current somewhere. You better make sure it's going in the right direction. Oh, well, well we're going to have a house. Well, we're going to, oh, I bought a car. Uh, it'll be mine in 10 years. And I, uh, I, I've got a credit card. And, I've got, and I just I said, oh, my. And I said, how much do you make? And they would tell me. I said, don't add up. Doesn't add up. I was in Texas. I said, don't add up. <laughs> it just don't. <laughs> And so we'd work with it, and it was hard. And then I'd I'd say, are you planning on giving anything to the Lord, to the church? Oh, yeah, we're going to do that too. I looked at, I said, ain't much left. I'll say this to you. That's not the way to do a budget. You start with a tithe, 10% of how much you earn and you adjust your budget below that. You don't give God the scraps at the end. Great Christians don't give God pocket change and spare time. Great Christians obey God and seek first the kingdom 
of God and trust God to provide them. Because when you give that tithe first, God gives you more spending power on the 90% left over than if you take the whole thing and steal the money from God. I know that's strong, but I'm just preaching scripture, all right? Will a man rob God? The proportion, the minimum, let me just say this to you. The baby step of first obedience is 10% to your storehouse, and we'll talk about that momentarily. Some people will ask me, net or gross? I hear that all the time, net or gross? And it's kind of like, you know, how, how, what's the smallest amount we can give to get away with this? And I always answer them the same way. It depends on how you want to be blessed. Do you want to be blessed on the net or the gross? You say, what are you talking about? Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, it means <laughs> you're in deeper trouble than I thought. But anyway, gross is pre-tax. Net is post-tax. Why should God, this is the way I've always thought about it, why should God suffer because I get to live in the United States of America and pay taxes? So I do it on the gross. If you're gonna err, err to being generous. That's a good thing for Christians. Now, did God give us net or gross when he gave us Jesus? He gave us the gross. He, I'm not talking about gross like we usually use that word. I'm talking about he gave us everything. How can we give him second best? C.S. Lewis in Mere Christianity, a famous book, said, I don't know that we can settle how much we ought to give. The only safe rule is to give more than we think we can spare. A portion of tithing is not about how little or big is the tithe. It's just giving 10% of your income. Secondly, the place for tithing. This is huge. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. Everybody say storehouse. What in the world is a storehouse? In the Old Testament, 1 Kings 7, 51 tells us, thus all the work that King Solomon performed in the house of the Lord was finished. And Solomon brought <clears throat> in the things dedicated by his father David, the silver, the gold, the utensils. He put them all in the treasure, treasuries of the house of the Lord, the treasure house. There was this compartment in the temple called the treasure house or the storehouse. And it's where they brought the offerings from all the Israelites that worshiped at Jerusalem. And from that, that amount of money, Solomon built the temple and he also paid, they paid the priest out of that money, the Levites, and they determined to support all the work of the Lord, all the sacrifices, every animal that was bought was bought out of that money, all of that. And the people, now listen, never designated their tithe, never. Now they might designate a free will offering above the tithe, but never designated the tithe. It went to the general fund, we would say. Never did they designate it. Now they did have, again, free will offerings from time to time, but I'll talk more about that later, but they never designated the time. They just gave it and trusted the Lord. Don and I got married in 1980, and I was making $200 a week, and the first check we would write from my little check from First Baptist Milan was a $20 check. Sometimes we'd just get a $20 bill and put it in the offering plate and we'd move on. We went to Texas. We had $600. We paid $200 for a 
Ryder rental truck and our youth group packed all of our stuff in it. By the time we got to Texas, it had rolled everywhere and it was a mess. We pulled up to Texas. It was over hundred degrees. It had been over hundred degrees in the summer of 1980 for over hundred days. And there was not one green blade of grass anywhere. I thought we had moved to the moon. And Donna had gotten a job as a teacher in Joshua, Texas. That's it's spelled Joshua. They call it Joshua, Texas just south of Fort Worth. And I, the, the deal was I was going to go to school for the first semester and not work outside of that. And then I'd get a job come January of my first year at seminary. So we thought she got paid right at the get go. Now, some of y'all don't know what I'm talking about. I'm using country language there. That means right at the beginning of September. But we found out she didn't get paid until the end of September. <laughs> we were putting a lot of water in the soup, brother, is all I can tell you. And we, didn't, <laughs> we finally got that paycheck. It was just under 900, right at $900. Uh, you know, she made just a little bit more than $200 a week. And we were just thinking we were rich. But the first check we wrote was to the little church. It was a big church. We joined there, South Cliff Baptist Church. It was a tithe. And you say, are you bragging? Nope. But I don't want to tell you to do something. Look at me. If I don't pray, I shouldn't preach a sermon on prayer. If I don't read my Bible, I shouldn't preach a sermon on read your Bible. If I don't witness, I shouldn't be up here preaching about anything. If I don't fellowship with other Christians, then I shouldn't talk to you about fellowshipping. And if I don't tithe to our church, I shouldn't talk to you about it. Amen? Amen. When it comes to this stuff, I'm a satisfied customer. I want to ask you, we tithe to this church 24 times a year. We've done it for 15 and a half years. We have never missed a tithe, never. And we more than tithe to the budget of this church. And we give to offerings as well. Not trying to brag, but I want to ask you, where is your tithe going? Did you hear that verse a while ago, verse 8? Will a man rob God, yet you're robbing me? But you say, how have we robbed God in tithes and offerings? I want to ask you. Are you spending the Lord's tithes the way you want to instead of bringing it to the house of God? Are you spending the Lord's tithes on your car payment? your house payment, your kid's college, groceries. Are you wearing God's tithe right now? Clothes you got on, did you buy it with God's tithe? Will a man rob God? Will you? You say, that's pretty stout, preacher. Yeah, it is. But I want to say this to you. Look at me. Everybody look at me. I'm not talking about give a bunch of money to Bellevue. If you think that, you don't know me and you don't know my heart. I'm going to tell you something that you may not like, but God knows my heart and what I'm about to say. The reason this message bothers some of you is you're in spiritual bondage and God wants to set you free. You're in a mess with your finances. You know it. You don't want to admit it. And you say, I'm not going to listen to this. I'll sit through this, Brother Steve, because I love you. I love Donna more, but I love you. That's the way it's always been. I get that. But now I'm, I'm not going to do this. You know what? If you don't start with this, you can take Dave Ramsey stuff all you want to. But if you don't do this, you're stealing from God. And the rest of it doesn't matter. I'm trying to get you out of bondage. 
If you came in here and you had a boa constrictor, a constrictor around you, I wouldn't touch that nasty thing, but I'd get a gun and shoot him in the head. Amen? Because why? You're in bondage. And I want you out of bondage. And I'm telling you, some of you have a boa constrictor wrapped around you, your marriage, your mind, your money, and you're not doing it God's way, and you wonder why he won't, you're not being blessed. I'm just telling you, now, now look at me, I'm not mad at you, but you are not smarter than God, Amen. and neither am I. So get just chunk, does anybody know what that means? Chunk all of your excuses and listen to the word. Forget what I say. Who cares? Listen to the word. That's the place for the tithe, the storehouse. Not the YMCA. Not the whatever other ministry out there, the food bank. No, the storehouse. And then you can give offerings to those things. Number three, the purpose of tithing. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse so that there may be food in my house, so that God's house can be provided for. Everybody look straight up. How many of you see lights up there? Anybody? There's four of you that do. What, what else? What's up there? I, I see about 200 lights. Do y'all see those? Are they on? Did you know that MLGW has the nerve to give us a monthly bill to keep those things on? I just thought they'd give it to us. There's one over there that's not doing his job. He's out. You say, Brother Steve, I don't know what you're talking about. Sure you do. How many of you upstairs like those new chairs? Amen. They're brand new. And those chairs are coming down here, all going to be brand new. Come sit in them. That's wonderful. Why don't you help pay for them? Why don't you do your fair share? What's your fair share? 10% of your income. Not just to pay for chairs, but for people to get saved. I went out and taught the other day. I want to tell you what. God always gives you just a little bit of encouragement when you need it. Amen. I was preaching at 5.45 in the morning one day this last week. I don't even remember what day it was. I think it was Wednesday. And I was preaching. An old boy came up to me after it was over with. It was at Downline Ministries. He came up to me, and he's one of the pastors over there at Harvest Church. He said, Preacher, I want to tell you, in 2007 at the same Christmas tree, you shared the gospel and I was sitting out in one of those seats at Bellevue, and I got saved. And then God called me to preach, and I just want to thank Bellevue for preaching the gospel. Let's thank God for that young man right now. Amen? Amen. Look at me. When I, when I, see, when I see seats, I don't just see seats. I see people sitting there hearing the gospel and getting saved. Amen? People getting set free from bondage and people growing in grace. That's what I see. Not only that, but we give more to missions than any of the other 3,000 plus Southern Baptist churches in the state of Tennessee. We give more away to missionaries than any other Southern Baptist church in the state of Tennessee. We give more away than anybody else. Anybody. So don't think this is all about us. It's not. It's about him. Purpose of tithing is that there may be food in the house. You say, this is a strong sermon. This is a wimpy sermon compared to old Haggai. Haggai, y'all might vote to throw him out. Listen to this. You think I'm being strong? 
<laughs> you think Malachi is strong? Listen to his contemporary named Haggai. What had happened was Haggai came back with the people. They'd been in captivity. They'd been in Babylon. And then they were in Persia that took over Babylon for 70 years. They finally came back. God said when they came back, build the temple, they laid the foundation and that was it. They laid the foundation. They started the work of God, but they didn't finish the work of God. Instead of that, they laid the foundation for the temple of God. And then they went out and built their own houses. And they were working on their houses when Haggai walked up to them. And Haggai was as stout as onion breath. Then the Lord sent this message through the prophet Haggai. Why are you living in luxurious houses while my house lies in ruin? This is what the Lord of heaven's army said. Look at what's happening to you. You've planted much, but you harvest little. You eat, but you're not satisfied. You drink, but you're always thirsty. You put on clothes, but you can't keep warm. Your wages disappear as though you were putting them in pockets filled with holes. This is what the Lord of heaven's army says. Look at what's happening to you. Now go up into the hills, bring down some wood, bring down some timber, rebuild my house. Then I'll take pleasure in it and I'll be honored, says the Lord. You hoped for rich harvest, but they were poor. And when you brought your harvest home, I blew it away. Why? Because my house lies in ruins or desolation, says the Lord of heaven's armies, while all of you are building, busy building your fine, fancy houses. It's because of you that the heavens withhold the dew and the earth produces no crops. I have called for a drought on your fields and your hills, a drought to wither the grain and the grapes and olive trees and all of your other crops a drought to starve you and your livestock and to ruin everything you have worked so hard to get. God said, either support my work or pay the penalty. Can't have it both ways. I wonder if Haggai's words bother you this morning. Do you give your fair share? Do you give your tithe? How much of the reconstruction at Bellevue will you help with? How many missionaries will get to preach the gospel in another country because you gave something? You say, I don't want to hear this. That says a lot about you, not God. What about during COVID? Did you continue to tithe if you had a job? God doesn't want churches raising money with bake sales, raffles, tickets, bingo games, yard sales. When I first got a church to pastor, I was in Texas, mowed the yard, sat down on a Saturday was going to watch some good Southwest Conference football. I think Texas was playing TCU. I wanted to see that game. All of a sudden, somebody rang my doorbell. And uh, I went to it. It was somebody from some group. I, oh, I know it was. It, it was the Girl Scouts, and they were selling cookies. I was all in, baby, on that one, all right? I love those. How many of you wish you had some right now? Amen. I wish I had a sleeve of those right now. Those peanut butter ones. Aren't those good? Oh, don't, don't act like you don't know what I'm talking about. So I bought some peanut butter cookies, ate them before Donna got home. I can eat, look, I can eat a sleeve of those and not flinch. Amen. Give me a glass of milk. I'm good. Sat down, watched the football. Peanut butter everywhere. <laughs> Within just a few minutes, door rings again. I thought, what's going on, man? I go, it's hot outside. I'd mowed the yard. I'd taken a shower. I was wanting to watch the football. 
I got a belly full of cookies. There's somebody from some group in town, I don't know who it was, and they are selling raffle tickets. Now, don't get mad at me. Don't get mad at what I'm about to say, but I think I don't like raffle tickets. I think it's a kind of, I think it's very close, a kissing cousin to gambling because everybody else has got to lose for me to win. Anytime you get into something like that, I don't like it. I don't want to bet against you so that I can win, okay? And that's a raffle ticket. So anyway, I loved him. I said, God bless you. I can't do that. I don't do raffle tickets. Sat down. God is my witness. Doorbell rang again in about 15 minutes. I just started to take my chair and sit out there on the front porch. <laughs> I opened the door, and this one was the, the worst one. It was a church in town raising money for a mission project by selling fertilizer. I kid you not. And I said, with all due respect, I don't believe churches ought to have bake sales or raise fundraisers. I believe that the Christians, if everybody gave a tithe, we'd have more than enough money to do the work of God. Amen? If everybody did their fair share. So I said, God bless you. Don't need any fertilizer. And if I did, I wouldn't buy it. He said, Brother Steve, you're hard. No, I'm not. The purpose of tithe, tithing is to support the work of God. Number four, the proving of tithing. This is very important. Verse 10, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse so that there may be food in my house. Test me now in this. Test me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. Everybody said, test me now in this. Say it with me. Test me now in this. Only time God says that in the Bible. Only time. Put me to the test. It's like God is challenging you. Put me to the test. Do this. And that's what we do every year on this Sunday. You don't hear me talking, preaching about tithing all the time. But every year, I do it on this Sunday. You say, what Sunday is this? I'll figure this out. I won't be here next year. <laughs> do whatever you want to. You want to run? You run. This is just as much in the Bible as anything else. And I want to say this to you, and I'm going to say it in love, but if this is bothering you, it says more about you than it does the Bible. Test me now in this. See, if I will not open the windows of heaven, pour out a blessing until it overflows. Test God. I'm talking to somebody, though, that you, this has caught you off guard. You've never tithed. You, you, you don't understand it. You say, I didn't know I was supposed to do it. I mean, if God wants me to do it, I'll, I'll do it. Well, that's what we do. That's the way we go. You put God to the test. You say, I've never thought of it this way. And look, I get that. If you've never been taught or if you've, ne you've never seen it modeled. My daddy made me work when I was growing up. I'm glad he did. I started working when I was 13 years old. And I tithed. I gave to the church. First Baptist Dyersburg. When I was a senior in high school, I had three jobs. I worked for my mom in the cleaning business. I kept three of the Little League baseball fields marked off in the summer. And I mowed a dozen yards every week. I worked all the time. And when I got money, I gave to the church and I put money in a savings account. He said, well, you trying to brag? No, I'm just trying to say, I've been doing this a long time. Satisfied customer, not a salesman. That's the way I've lived all my life. And I want to say this to you. When you do money God's way, like Dave Ramsey talks about, you start with the tithe. You don't give God pocket change. You don't give God leftover scraps. You don't do that. You seek first the kingdom of God. 
You get your paycheck, you give your tithe to your church, and you give whatever other offerings you're going to give to wherever. And then you put some money back for expenditures, you pay your bills, you make sure that you're, here's the big thing, you make sure that you're living within your means. You don't have a house you can't afford, you don't have a car you can't afford, you don't do things you can't afford, you don't go to a college you can't afford. You mean I'm supposed to pay for things? Yes. I go into a store. How do you want to pay for that? I said, there's only one way to pay for it, me to give you some money. No, do you want to put it on credit? That's, putting it on a credit card is not paying for it. That's mortgaging it. It's mortgaging your, mortgage, mortgaging, it's doing that, whatever it is, mortgaging. I have, y'all notice that I have problems with some words. <laughs> mortgaging, it's mortgaging your future to pay for your present. I'll tell you how to get a raise, desire less. Don't go out to eat all the time. Stay at home and eat peanut butter and jelly. I've eaten more pe- peanut butter and jelly sandwiches than anybody you know. I like it. Get a plan. Aim every dollar. That's what Dave Ramsey will tell you. Money is currency. It's a current. It's going to flow. Aim it. Learn how to pay off debt. Learn how to save and invest. Learn how to be generous to other people. You know how much you're going to leave when you die? All of it. What's it going to matter how much you got in the bank account? Give to other folks. Do money God's way. And I want to say this. You and I don't own anything. We are just taking care of what God has given us for a little short time. You don't own the clothes on your back. You don't own the money in your bank account. You don't own anything. You don't even own the breath in your lungs. If it wasn't for God, your heart wouldn't even be beating. Don't tell me about how hard you work. He gave you all the means by which you have been able to accomplish anything you've accomplished. And if you look, he's kept you in your right mind to be able to handle things, all right? Don't tell me God hadn't been good to you. And you start thinking about what God's done for you, you'll start running and shouting, even if you're a Baptist. Test me now in this. Come on. You don't believe I can come through? Put me to the test. I take care of my own, God says. I've never missed a meal. You can tell, can't you? I've never missed a tithe either. Never and won't. I had a lady in my, one of my churches who was 85 years old. She had raised, I think it was eight kids by herself. Her husband died, and she never remarried. She was on our finance committee. You know why? Not because she was some big fancy banker or anything else, but because she raised eight kids on her little meager salary. That's the kind of person I want on the finance committee right there, Amen. And here's what she said. If I, she said, here's what I did, Brother Steve. If I got a dollar, I gave a dime of it. You won't give $10 off of 100 if you won't give a dime off of a dollar. <laughs> Amen. You said, well, I'll be glad when this one's over. Well, it's not. Number five, the provision of tithing. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse so that there'll be food in my house. Test me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you a blessing until it overflows. I will provide all that you need. You won't have enough room to take it in. He's not talking about making everybody rich. I'm not a prosperity preacher. I don't get into all that stuff. But I want to tell you this. What he is saying is, I won't meet all your greed, but I will meet all of your need. I'll give you food to eat, clothes to wear, and a roof over your head, and I'll give you a little bit left over to hand out to somebody that needs something. I'll take care of you. But you've got to do it my way, not yours. And, and, and just, let's be frank. 
Some of you know your way is not working. And for you to go out of here and keep doing it your way and expect different results is not real smart. If it's not working now, it's not going to work when you leave here. Why don't you do it God's way? You say, I don't know what to do. Then go sign up. Go right out these doors right here. Sign up for that Dave Ramsey. Nine weeks. Can't you invest that? Nine weeks. Just study. It's scripture. Go do it. He gives you every, everything you need. Some of you are fighting about money all the time, mad about money all the time. Stop it. Get a plan. Get a plan. Get God's plan. Do it God's way. It starts with storehouse tithing. You don't know the name of Henry Crowell. He blessed my heart this morning. So who is he, Brother Steve? He died in 1944. He was born five years before the Civil War started. He died one year before World War II ended. He lived a long time. He got tuberculosis when he was a boy almost died, but he went to hear a famous evangelist who was the Billy Graham of his day, Dwight L. Moody. He got saved and he said, Lord, because of my tuberculosis, I can't be a preacher. But Lord, I'll try to be a businessman if you'll help me. I'll give the rest of my life to your churches and to your cause. He bought a little rundown mill in Ravana, Ohio. Ten years later, he was the CEO of Quaker Oats. I had, some, my, oat, I had my oat mill this morning, and I thank God for Henry Crow. And he gave away millions upon millions upon millions upon millions of dollars over the years. He started off with 10% when he had nothing. He had nothing but a rundown old mill. And before he died, he was given 70% of everything he made to the Lord. Don't tell me you can't do it. You say, if I give 10%, will I... Get a big oatmeal, I, I doubt it. But I tell you what, it's going to be a lot better if you do what God says than if you don't do it. The provision of tithing. He opens the windows. Now, one more thing, and we'll be through the, the perpetuation of tithing. And I put that in there because some Christians, they're so bent on not tithing. Say, that's storehouse tithing. That's Old Testament. We don't need to do that. I've heard preachers say that, famous preachers. Oh, you don't need to tithe, all that stuff. That's not applicable for us. That's not a discipline for Christians. Well, tithing wasn't a primary discipline that Jesus taught, but it was a discipline that Jesus taught in Matthew 23, 23. And by the way, if you're concerned about the New Living Translation on this, I have looked at the original language and I've talked with people. It does say this in the original. Look at this. What sorrow awaits you, teachers of religious law, Pharisees, hypocrites, mask wearers, for you're careful to tithe even the tiniest income from your herb, gardens, but you ignore the more important aspects of the law, justice, mercy, and faith. Now, a lot of people stop right there. See there, see there, you don't have to tithe. But what about the last part of the sentence? You should tithe, yes, but don't neglect the more important things. You say, Brother Steve, it says right there, it's not as important as, I understand there's, I get there's a pecking order. Some of y'all don't know what that is either, but I understand there's a list. I get it. I get it. But how many of you know that even the smallest commandment of God is important? Amen. Listen to what Jesus said about that. He said in Matthew 5, 18 and 19, I tell you the truth until heaven and earth disappear or pass away, not even the smallest detail of God's law will disappear until its purpose is achieved. So if you ignore the least commandment and teach others to do the same, you will be called least in the kingdom of God. 
I get it. Why do you think I only preach on it one time a year? I realize tithing's not the most important thing, but it is important. It is important. And it is a perpetual thing that we're still to do. I want to read to you one more verse and we'll be through. I want to ask you a simple question as we conclude. And we've gone 45 minutes and 33 seconds. Here's the verse, Matthew 16, 26. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? How many of you would say that your soul is very valuable? How many would say that? Anybody out there? Raise your hand if you think your soul is valuable. Your soul is going to live on and on in eternity. Must be valuable. And he said... Your soul is important. What will a man give in exchange for his soul? In other words, there's nothing more valuable than your soul, right? Okay. If you're saved, you have given your soul to Jesus. That's the very heart of you. I mean, you, you're saved. You, you, he, you, we talk about soul winning. <laughs> so you gave your soul to Jesus. And when you die, you're going to be absent from the body, present with the Lord your soul goes there first with your spirit and then your body is going to be resurrected and reunited and you'll, thus you'll always be with the Lord. So your soul's important. Now I want to ask you a question. Here's the question. How can you trust the Lord with the most valuable thing you have, your soul, all right? How can you trust the Lord with your soul and you can't trust him with 10% of the money that he gives you. Think about it. Oh, I trust him with my soul, but now I can't, I can't, I, I make, I make a thousand dollars. I can't trust him with a hundred dollars. You can't, you can trust God with your eternal soul, but you can't trust him with a hundred bucks. What's up with that? I want to ask you, let's go back just a second. Let's go back to that Old Testament thing. That's where some of you really think you, you can get out of this. I want to ask you a question. I live on this side of the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus. It's kind of nice over here. There's nobody over here, all right? <laughs> I live on this side of Jesus coming to this earth and going back to heaven. So why should I give a smaller percentage on this side of Jesus than the people did on the other side of Jesus when they didn't even know exactly what was gonna happen when the Messiah came? I mean, I know what happened. He saved my soul. He pulled me out of the miry clay. When I wasn't even looking for him, he came running after me. He was like the father of the prodigal. I came home. I had nothing to give him. And he saved me. He pulled me out of the miry clay. He pulled me out of a life that I would be dead by now. I'm telling you, anything he wants from me, even if it's financial, I want to say this. All he's got to do is say it. And I'll say private gains, reporting for duty, whatever you want, because I wouldn't have anything. I wouldn't have anything. I wouldn't have any, I sure wouldn't have Donna. I wouldn't be in a pastor. I wouldn't be a, in a church. I wouldn't be alive if it wasn't for the Lord Jesus Christ. I wouldn't even be alive. So, Lord, if you tell me to give 10%, that's, 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 that's a deal right there. That's a deal. You've been good to me. Been good to me. He was good to me at the first church I was ever at. We didn't make any money, but you know what? We survived <laughs> because our God took care of us. I told my daddy what I made. He just shook his head. He was saying, I don't know how you're going to live on that. <laughs> but we did, and we tithed. I know what it's like. I know what it's like. All I can tell you is it's always best when you obey God. There's no excuse not to obey God. 
And one more thing, it's never too late to start doing right. You may be 65 years old. You may be 70 years old. It's never too late to start doing right. Never. Put God to the test. I challenge you. Prove the tithe. Don't just give today. Do it for several months. Just see. And and take this Dave Ramsey course or get some help. You don't know what to do. You weren't trained. My parents trained me. My, My Dave Ramsey stole everything he knows from Edgar Gaines. I want you to know that. He stole everything he knows from Edgar Gaines because my daddy was doing all that stuff way back in the day. My daddy paid off triple house payments and he didn't make a lot of money. He was just a railroader. But he hated debt. He saved money. And he tithed. He lived within his means. I just want to encourage you to do it God's way. All right. I guess I'm through. If you think I don't love you, you're wrong. (laughs) It'd be a lot easier not to preach a message like this and let you just go right on, do your thing. Some of y'all need to wake up and do it God's way. Let's all stand up. I just want to encourage you to start that tithing as soon as you want to put God to the test. And then, again, if you don't know what to do, could we put up there, I don't know if you've got it or not. If you don't, just listen to what I'm about to say. Go to bellevue.org slash Ramsey, R-A-M-S-E-Y. Bellevue.org, there it is, bellevue.org, Ramsey. See that at the bottom? See that? Take a picture of that if you need to. And just go to it. Now, it's not $250, is it? No, that's the value, it's free. That's the value, it's free. I said it's free. Wow. It's free. I saw that $250, I said, no, wait a minute. That's the value. I got a feeling if you do what he says, it's going to be valued at way more than $250. So get in on it. Don't act like you know everything. I'm not trying to be a smart aleck. Just look. If your way is not working, get a new way. (laughs) I talk to people all the time. I'm not losing weight. Well, are you changing your habits? No, I'm not changing my habits. Well, duh. You said you were through, Brother Steve. I know. Let's pray. All right. Okay. Lord, bless this time. Use it for your glory.